Hi there. I'm Joe. Welcome to my channel. And uh, hopefully you'll, this will be a short one. I oh, Short. I always say it's going to be short. But really, this should be short. I'm going to actually do a real-world test of an underground wire detector. So stay tuned. So what we have here is a Viver or a Vivor or whatever um, signal tracer. It's supposed to go to about six feet. It says two meters. So a little over six feet deep. And you can check everything out online, but it it has a it has a continuity test and then two modes, analog and digital. And if you're going to look for a broken wire underground, about the only thing you can do is digital. Analog, it says, is pretty shallow. And continuity, it is to see if you have a and continuity, of course, much like an ohm meter. Um, comes with a screw to put the battery in, which I've already done. It gives you some cheap earbuds uh, in case you're in a noisy environment. It gives you a cute little ground rod, uh, which we're going to have to use. And what's interesting is one of these guys, this guy, the transmitter, has a rechargeable battery in it with a USB port. And this takes a 9-volt battery. So, who knows? Um... And we'll see. I, you know, it's it wasn't terribly expensive, so I don't know just how good this is going to work. So uh, stick around. This is a EM twenty four twenty five. So I don't I don't see. Yeah, it must come in a pair, so that's what you've got. All right, we're going to go out and try it. So today, I'm going to try to trace this piece of underground cable. It comes down through some concrete here, into the ground, goes... Oh, 20 or 30 feet that way, and then across underneath the lawn, and probably underneath that holly into the garage. It's broken somewhere. I tried it with a little, an older tracer, and had absolutely no luck. So we're going to see how this does. So, one of the 18 warnings is, don't use this in the rain because it's not waterproof. And it's now spitting. So we'll we'll try to get through this as fast as we can. So you turn on for two seconds. We'll give it halfway digital. And this guy we'll try to straighten him out. See what happens with him. And power. Well, clearly, Wow. I 
I can't get far enough away from this thing to... Well, it finally stopped beeping. I'm about 30 feet away. So, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. This is a little too sensitive. That's as low as I can go there. And wow, maybe I'm going to switch to analog. This is nuts. All right, I don't know what to tell you. That's uh. That's way more noise than I wanted. And, uh, I'm wondering if all this cable that's above ground is acting as an antenna and transmitting the signal. That would really bite. So we're gonna go inside to the other end. It's the red lead that's broken. And uh, we're going to hook this up to the red lead, which is right here. Well, it's quiet now. Huh. Huh. Okay, we went from one extreme to the other. Oh, getting closer. Uh, turn up the signal a little bit. And we're going to head over here. Huh. Well. Well, that's just crazy. Well, huh.
Well, I don't see it anywhere here, which is okay. Oop. Going really slow, looking at the lights. It's pretty bad there. I don't know why the power light's blinking. I have to go look that up. This is the one with the 9 volt battery in it. Huh. All right, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to have to cut out a lot of this. It, uh, it's going to take some doing. Um, I think one of my problems is all the, all the cable that's above ground... Although that's right now, it's not doing anything. And the fact that I have a black wire right next to a red wire, and it's the red wire that's broken, so I can't really... And it, it looks like it induces the RF across. So, I don't know what to say. I am dragging here. I'm about where the right angle is. I guess I better go read and see what a flashing power light means. Well, it looks like here is the start of the cable. I get nothing there. So, if I go this way, maybe I'll hit the... And I don't.
All right, well, I'm going to have to do this a little more methodically, I guess. So hang on. Hi, folks. So this may seem a little disjointed because I'm actually doing this after I found the cable, after I dug it up, after I filled the holes back in that I made. But there were a couple of unanswered questions, especially in my mind, when I reviewed my video footage. So I can't show you the cable laying across the ledge. That would be part one because that is, as I'm walking across the lawn, that would have been, that's terrible, I'm gonna switch. All right, so my cable came up through here. And it went down 10, 20, maybe 30 feet, and then 50 feet across. That's well established. What I didn't show you more of is that, in fact, it's encased. It's in metal conduit in here under concrete. And then there's a pull box up here. And I had 80 feet of that underground cable sitting up here, right up in the air. So it was radiating and it was causing all kinds of problems. I took and stretched it out over the far side. That helped, um, but having cable in the air really desensitizes your equipment horribly. So I was able to, once I used a tube around the receiver and properly insulated myself from it and in fact I may make a more permanent tube just the right length put a ground probe on the end of it seal the end of it so that only a certain part can stick out um, I think that's going to be obvious obviously necessary so along here I could easily find the cable I knew about where it was but it did a really good job of zeroing in on where my cable went and it did a really good job of showing me the curve here to the garage and you won't be able to see it but I used some green paint where I found the boundaries on the two sides and it got a little crazy here and this is where I stopped because there's like five feet between this one and this one and it was like well that isn't too helpful and that's when I realized I was getting this extra noise in here down here it's a lot closer there's only maybe two feet between here and here and about the same here and here and as I worked towards the garage here and here so that was pretty it was pretty accurate there and yep it's headed right towards the flower bed <laughs> so that doesn't help at all and that was with my transmitter sitting over there above ground hooked up to no I take that back I could not get these signals with the transmitter sitting right there with all that cable. I ended up moving the transmitter and you can see the cable outside now. But I had left that cable in this piece of conduit which was vertical in the clamps and hooked the transmitter up here. Well, of course now the transmitter is sitting right on the ledge. Probably would have helped to shield it somewhat. The fact of the matter is, is that it really gave me a good indication of where the cable went. And the bad part was I couldn't tell where the red wire was broken. Now if it's broken in here, 
someplace close to the garage. I didn't take it take the time to try to find it because it wouldn't have made any difference. So that's what I wanted to show you. It's the and that's will, what will make more sense of my comments later on. Uh, it did work. I was able to and you can't see it, but I was able to pretty well map out right through here where the cable went. Uh, and that was that was one of the issues is I didn't know where along this ledge it actually made the turn to go down the ledge. And that's what I needed and it worked really well for that. Hey folks, uh, well sorry for the running around outside, um, but it was the first time I was using this Vivor, Vivor, uh, and it uh, didn't go as planned. This is the cable locator, it's supposed to be good to two meters, a little over six feet. And as you saw in my previous clip, I was doing okay and then things got a little crazy. I think a lot of that was inexperience. Uh, more importantly, it taught me a lesson about these cable locators and something Anybody using one of these, be it this one or another one that uses RF, should be aware of. Uh, and that has to do with how well the radio waves uh, travel underground as opposed to above ground. So the scenario, if you saw outside, was that I was going from inside my garage where there was... 18 inches of underground Romex UF in a piece of pipe that was not grounded. Went underground about 70 feet, then came above ground through a piece of conduit, which I guess you'd say is fairly well grounded. It was buried in the dirt. But then I had 80 feet of UF sitting on top of the ledge which put it up in the air, uh, above ground, of course, which makes it a much better antenna than the stuff underground. And having the transmitter pretty close and above ground to where I was trying to locate my cable also did not help. I think it would have been much better if I had put this... But I'm, I didn't even check, but I'm hoping that you're in. Yeah, you're uh, you're in the picture here. This is the transmitter. This is the receiver. This should probably have been in my basement in the main panel with all the cable underground. Unfortunately, in the garage, if I had done that, it comes up from my basement, goes up to the top of the garage across the joists, the ceiling joists, and then back down. So it also would make a great antenna. So in essence, no matter where I put it, the piece underground was connected to two really good antennas, which made it really difficult to pick up just the signal from in the ground. On top of that, and that's this is the transmitter, and I tried it with one lead, both leads. It was so sensitive with both leads that I ended up using just a single lead, the red lead. The receiver, on top of that, this is metal, so you would think that this would attenuate, that this would prevent this piece from picking up a signal. And this should have been shielded inside. 
although it does tell you to wear electrically insulated shoes so that you do not induce a signal into this. Um, I was doing that and this guy is sensitive enough and not shielded enough that when I got to the cable being more than about eight inches below ground I could not reliably locate the cable. It would matter if I was standing directly over it or if I was holding it away from me or if I was holding it assuming the cable was going this way if I was standing here and trying to do this or if I was standing where I thought the cable was and trying to locate um, all that mattered because my body was acting as a reflector an antenna a combination of the both what I ended up doing I had a five foot chunk of aluminum tubing that I slid this into and had just a little bit just the tip left out so that when I held it up the tip was pretty much on the ground only so all this was fairly well shielded because I took that tube and whacked it into the dirt slightly so it was it was grounded um, that worked much better so I believe in an ideal situation where you have an underground cable with none of it above ground anywhere near where you want to locate it this would work very well this worked enough that I could tell where the cable was for the most part I could tell uh, my my cable almost made an L. It went out from the garage out to the ledge and then took a right hand turn and that's because I had some construction done several years ago so I had to extend it. And for the most part I could tell where the cable was along the ledge because it turns out it was not to code, it was only down about 14 inches. It needed to be two feet. So it was close enough that it actually had a reasonable signal and I could tell where it started taking the bend which was critical because I didn't know how far along the ledge I could go so um, although it didn't work perfectly it worked sufficiently for what I needed uh, the cable coming off of the ledge I was able to follow that for a little bit but now I was halfway almost you might say between the cable that was in the air on that end and this which was a foot and a half above the ground on on the other end and I even with my tube I had trouble finding it to make matters worse I was actually trying to find a break in the cable there it, it was 12 3 with ground the red wire was broken someplace and I could not tell where it was and that also has to do with RF energy and inducing the uh, the radio waves into other devices or other wires. Uh, when you have wires that are parallel for a long distance, if one has a signal in it, uh, whatever frequency it is, I think these are 900 megs, it induces that same frequency, that wave, into the other good cable and you can't you can't find the end of this because the signal continues on that's unfortunate uh, I actually think that the the break was underneath a large bush where one of the roots got a hold of it so I wasn't going to find it anyway so th that was probably not a good test uh, but I tried to ground the white the black and the ground to ground to see if the red would function and my best option was to simply follow the cable out I, I could not find the broken piece but I didn't scan the whole length of the cable mainly because I had 20 feet that went underneath the um, flower beds and this big holly bush uh, which I suspect is where the break was so I have watched someone unpack one of these 
and one of the comments was, well, we need real-world data. Well, real-world data was a pain in the rear end. <laughs> um, it works because you can, you can, you can detect the signal. Um, I didn't go down six feet. I, the worst spot was a couple of feet. But I had it on pretty low sensitivity just because I had all the stuff in the air. And even a couple of feet down, I could tell where that cable was. So I would say this, for the price, uh, I don't know, I paid 40 or 50 bucks. For the price of it, it did the job. Um, and I didn't try, and continuity works, I, I decided to try to see if I had, could tell where the break was. I ended up cutting the cable uh, somewhere past the garage around the corner or across the ledge. I had found the cable over here, dug back towards the garage because I felt that's where the brake would be, somewhere's in there. And uh, 10 feet away from the ledge, I, I cut it. Uh, twisted the wires together, checked continuity, and I had no continuity on the red wire. So the continuity works. Um, didn't try the analog. Uh, the analog Apparently, according to their directions, is better for indoor wiring where you're looking through sheetrock or something. Um, it may actually have been better for me outside. I don't know. So, I'm happy with it. Um, I bought it from Viva. There was There's a 30-day unconditional guarantee. Um, if there's something wrong with it or it didn't work. Well, for me, it worked somewhat. So, it worked enough that I feel I should keep it because it's quite possible I'll use it in the future. I have a lot of underground wires in this on my property. So that said, I'm going to pull the batteries out off camera. Uh, well, one's a rechargeable. This is rechargeable. See, so even though you can open it up, that's a rechargeable. I'm going to leave it in there. Um, I suppose I could... It looks like it's a 9-volt style. Um, oh, not, uh, not easily removable, but it's lithium-ion, so I guess it'll be all right. Um, the other one uses AA or AAAs. I'll pull those out because those will rot. So, yes, I'm happy with it. It certainly works, uh, but you have to, it's not plug and play, I should say. It is, you do have to understand how radio waves and RF propagate and how you can be causing false leads, false positives on this, um, being a ham radio operator, being in electronics, I know most of that. So I was able to work around that. And uh, I realized I realized what I had to do. I had to shield this. I only left you know, about that much out of it. The rest of it was all in a solid tube. And in fact, if I grabbed the tube with bare hands it would pick up the radio wave. So I actually had to insulate myself from that metal tube. Um, so there's, there's, there's a learning curve. There's a little bit of understanding on how these actually work. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I think it's, if, you can't beat the price. If, if, but again, at the price, it's not, it's not ground penetration trading radar where you can actually see a wire. It's not a $6,000 item where you can really tune things in. <coughs> Excuse me. But it helped me greatly because I could see where my wires were. Uh, and it gave me a good start. So that's it. Um, it's a success. Thanks for watching. Hope you watch some of my other videos.
like, subscribe, let's see, how's the mantra go? Like, subscribe, share, dislike, comment. Uh, any of those are fine. Um, but I hope this helps somebody who's thinking of using these. Or This style of tester, uh, specifically this one, um, I, I think it's it's certainly a great bargain and if you use it with the expectation that you have to learn because the more you learn about it I'll bet the better off you are uh, I think this was worst case scenario with a lot of the wire above ground so that it leaked a lot of RF um, with me using my bare hands on this. I have a good pair of electrically insulating rubber gloves that are used on high tension lines. I should have used those. Um, but it, it did all right. It did all right. So again, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, now it's on to this, which is a different video. It's replacing the main cylinder on my main boom on my teramite and after that I go back to once again the light tower trailer uh, too many things going on and uh, winter's coming so I'm trying to get some stuff done before that happens alright thanks a lot catch you on the next one <laughs>